Hey guys, welcome. It's Chip Musa again. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, where have you been? For those of you that have subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I always start this video off by thanking our viewers. Thank you guys for all the comments, suggestions. We love you guys. You guys are motivating us to do better and better in every episode. And we're looking forward to having more interactions with you guys. So today's episode, and you can see I've got a bit of a twinkle in my eye. Today's episode is where I'm going to be discussing one of my favorite series from BMW. Everyone that knows me will know that I love E30s. But if you really know me and you've been following me for a few years, you know that I have love for a E12 5 Series. I've owned in total 14 E12s and the one behind me is one of the most special that I've ever owned in my life. So let's take it back to the 70s and the 80s. I call it the Shark and the Jaws era. The reason why I say it's the Shark and the Jaws era is because at the time when BMW were producing and manufacturing cars, they were busy with cars that similarly look like Jaws. For example, you'd get the E12 5 Series, you'd get the E24 635, 633, you'd even get the E23 Series. And if you look closely, those cars represented a similar styling from BMW. Now behind me is one of my favorite cars out of my collection. Now, an E12 535 personally is one of my most favorite BMWs to drive. I even rate it more fun to drive than a 325 IS. No lies. So I'll tell you guys later why I prefer this car and why this car is more fun in terms of driving uh, than a 325 IS. But for now, let me give you guys a bit of a background on this car. So this 5 Series or BMW's first 5 Series was launched in 1972, around about September at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Prior to these cars being launched, we had the E21 BMW, which was known unofficially as BMW's first 3 Series and officially in certain countries as BMW's first 3 Series. Prior to the 5 Series, BMW also had the E10, the 2002 or the 1602 or the 1502. We're going to be doing a future episode on one of those vehicles. So uh, looking forward to that as well. So with this vehicle, it was BMW's first saloon vehicle. It paved the way for something very special in terms of BMW heritage, but I'll get into that in a few minutes. So in the 5 Series, you get two types. You get your first gen. The first gen is the pics that you're seeing now. There are slight differences in terms of the motor and also the cosmetic appeal. The first gen in Kasi terms is called the back pocket. The reason why it's called the back pocket is because the petrol cap sits at the back of the vehicle. So ideally it was known in the Kasi culture as the back pocket E12. Then fast forward a few uh, years later, BMW decided to upgrade the vehicle a bit. So a few notable changes that you would uh, see is the difference in the bonnet, the difference in the rear of the car. Um, also, it came out with a different set of styled mirrors. Uh, dashboard was different, but it depended on which year. So there is a few notable differences, but the shape and the streamline of the body remain the same. Now, something cool that a lot of people don't know is that the E12, the second gen E12, shares the same suspension with the earlier E24 635 CSIs. So at the time, BMW was on a note where if something worked well in one car, they would adapt it into another car. Now, standing behind me is again one of my most special cars out of my collection. In fact, I bought it from a very good friend of mine, Mohamed Lambat, EMI Auto Parts. Uh, his details are up on the screen, specialist in BMW spares. This is officially the third car I bought from Mohamed over our friendship. Now, this car didn't come very easy. In fact, I had to convince him to sell the vehicle to me and he didn't want to. And on every phone conversation, the conversation would always end up with, bro, when you're selling me your car, and he'll put the phone down. Or bro, when you're selling me your car, no, I'm not ready to sell the car. In fact, I've got a good friend whose name is Caridas. Caridas actually helped convince him to sell the car to me. So Caridas, thank you so much for that. So my love with 5 Series and E12 started from a very young age. My late dad had a 5 Series. And as a kid, 
uh, if your dad had a 5 Series, it was like awesome. Or if your dad had a BMW, it was awesome. Um, we didn't have the newer BMWs like what was available at the time. But our old school 5 Series, which was a blue 518i, was the car for me. To make things even more exciting, like the 325 IS was a legendary car in a lot of the cassis and a lot of the towns around South Africa. There were two people that influenced me and started my love for E12s, especially the 535s. There's a family known as the Bellums, a very uh, a predominant family when it comes to old school vehicles. They had a light blue E12 535. And at the time when that car used to drive in our area, I used to go insane, guys. Like you have no idea what that car did to me inside. And the way the car sounded, it was just something else. And as a kid growing up, I knew one day I had to own a 535 because it was a car that was like the car to have. Interesting fact, they still own the car till today. I have tried to buy the car from them. They don't want to sell the car. So maybe you guys can help me convince them to sell the car so we can preserve it. Um, but yeah, it was a very cool car. Uh, at the time, it was a car that, that everyone wanted. And the reason why everyone wanted it was because of the history and the heritage behind it. So to give you a bit of perspective, there's two variations of the 535 BMW. So you get the M535, which was the first 535s that were made. And then you get the normal 535s, which is what this car is. So the first uh, 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 M535s, there was a number of 240 some odd that were produced and they were numbered cars. In fact, the VIN number started off with 535 and then the three digits, or maybe you had 081 or 082 or 156, whatever it was, that was the VIN. Uh, configuration at the time and it's a numbered car. I personally have owned two of the numbered 535. In total I've owned five 535. Uh, this being the first one. Every time I owned one I always sold it because I needed to grow my business. I'm sure you guys can see that in the car industry or in, in life if you own these vehicles they are there as investments and assets and the day you need to sell them there's always a buyer for it. That's why you gotta make sure you buy the right cars and you invest in the right cars. So fast forward a bit, I sold my 535s in order to grow the business and I always regretted. Something that was weird along my journey, one of my 535s were driving. Uh, it was one that I bought at an auction. Uh, I drove it for a very short period and then ended up selling it. My other 535s were never in driving condition. And it's weird because it's such a fun car to drive. The first time I drove a 535 was a buddy's car very a long time ago. And from that moment, I got hooked on it. So currently behind me is one of my non-driving 535s. Again, I bought it from a friend of mine, Mohammed Lambat. Eventually, he agreed. He sold the car to me. The car got towed to the workshop. And there is some work that needs to be done, but before I go through the work and the future plans, I wanna show you guys exactly why I love a 535. So let's start off with the interior. Now, I mentioned earlier there were two variations of the 535. So most of the numbered ones came with the pre-facelift dash and the second or, or basically the second batch of 535s which are not numbered came with the E28 dash. So the current dash that is in the sky is the E28 dash. The most desirable one is the pre-facelift dash. Something interesting that not a lot of people know is that the 535 shares the same motor, comes with the M30 motor, shares the same motor with the 635 and the 735. So again BMW at the time took from one car, put in the next car. So they found a formula of what was good and tried to put it in the next cars and make the best of a situation, which I respect. Something that these cars are known for and not a lot of people know is that it shares the same steering wheel with the BMW M1. So this steering wheel is super valuable uh, to collectors and people that know cars. But now you guys just learned the similarity and what makes this car so special and how BMW were interchanging parts at the time. Uh, another notable thing is the original Recaro seats. I mentioned on E30s that we in South Africa have a bad habit of calling the sports seats the Recaro seats. This is actually the Recaro seats. And the reason why BMW put Recaro seats in this car is because it's a performance car. So uh, it needs to hug you and you need to feel comfortable when you are 
obviously enjoying the performance of the car you get two variations of the gearbox right so in my mind Whenever I buy an E12 535, I look at the VIN, I look at the dash, I look at the steering wheel, I look at the seat. There's one thing that this car does not have, or else it would have been my perfect 535, is the one down gearbox. So the one down gearbox, if I'm not mistaken, my friend KB always says it's what? Slatla, some fele or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, maybe you guys can correct me. It means monkey hand or monkey leg, which is the dog leg gearbox with the hand down. This car doesn't have the dog leg gearbox. It wasn't a deal breaker for me because it's still a 535. I would like to, in time when I do start restoring the car, source a, five, three, uh, a one down gearbox and fit the one down gearbox. And then my, car, my 535 is basically the perfect spec. Now you'll notice as well, the car comes with the sunroof. Not all 535s came with sunroofs. You guys know I'm a sunroof guy. So this car's got a sunroof, it's in working order. Um, it's basically got everything that I want besides the one down gearbox. Uh, my plans for the car, I'm going to do a resto mod. A resto mod is basically where you restore the car to OEM, but you add a little bit touches. So the color variation on the paint could be different. The wheels, the interior. I actually have a plan for this car. I know what I want. I know the color I want. I'm thinking more of like a plum, not even a plum, like a very dark cross between a, a, a purple, a burgundy, uh, almost black if you call it. I want to do a nice tan interior. I feel like this car should have a nadi steering, a wooden gear knob. So that's the vibe I want to go with and definitely a split wheel. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys think I should keep this color? Do you think I should keep this interior? Try and get it more original. What would you go with? And also, would you keep the gearbox with what the car came with? Or would you put the one down gearbox to make the car more desirable? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I want to show you guys something else that excites me on this car. Okay, I want to show you guys uh, the original sticker. So the, this particular car had paint in its life, but uh, they obviously didn't take out the sticker. They just masked it off. With the technology we have in today's time, you can buy these stickers and you can have them remanufactured. So the day I get time to build this car and actually restore it, I will be taking the stickers off and ordering a new sticker kit. So the car itself is currently not running. Uh, the fuel tank is taken out. The electrical needs to be sorted. I need to source a few missing bits and bobs for this car. But ultimately, it is a 95% complete car. It's got papers. It's registered as a 535. Uh, needs some work, but I'm happy with the car because it's a car that you just can't buy. I mean, if I have to ask you guys, when was the last time you saw a 535 come up for sale? I'm sure you'll scratch your head because they don't come up for sale. And I mentioned in previous videos, there's an inner circle of collectors where cars shift around, where the public doesn't know. A lot of cars like this has been sold through that network. Uh, so when they do come up for sale, they don't last for long. To give you guys an example of what these cars could sell for and what I've seen them sell for, the M535, which is the one you want to have, that car sells for up to about 450, 500,000. And the normal 535s, depending on how well the restoration is or how original the car, you could fetch up to about 350, 400,000 as well. So there are cars that are climbing in value. A lot of collectors want them. And uh, I don't know, I just feel if you were a collector and if you grew up in the era that I grew up in, uh, it's a car you would want to have. Uh, especially when we come to the driving part but we'll talk about that later okay cool so guys so this is also a buyer's guide for those of you guys that are looking to buy a 5 series or a 535 so i mentioned a few key points right the car's gotta have the right motor the vin's gotta say or the tag's gotta say 535 you also gotta make sure that it's got the ricardo seats the m1 steering wheel also dependent on which one it is you'll either get the pre facelift dash or you'll get the e28 dash i call it another thing as well you got to check out for is the condition of the trim so this car because my friend mo is a collector most of his cars stand in a warehouse hardly gets driven and uh, when i looked at the condition of the car i seen that all the beading and chrome trim was present which is important and also they in good nick which is super important because the cost to repair beading and to do chroming in south africa today is ridiculous so i always suggest that you look for a good set of second hand 
or if you're lucky maybe you can look overseas and try and find brand new items something that's notable as well is that this particular car has got all its matching glass so if you look at the front window the rear window and the quarter glass it's all the original glass from the car so that will tell me that the car's never been in a side smash or also that the car's never been broken into or driven or wrapped around the tree because you can buy cars like that where stuff is hidden this is a telltale sign to tell you the history and condition of the car now with the e12 the 535 um, another small notable difference and collectors and car enthusiasts go mad for this back in the day if you had this aa stickers on your car you were the boss so this believe it or not this is a selling point for the car you can use it as a selling point if you are a seller or you can use it as part of the reasons to buy the car because of the originality another thing as well Santam insurance is one was one of the oldest and biggest insurance companies it's got its original insurance sticker from back in the day it's got its oh well it had its club motors bmw sticker um, again modern technology we can have this reprinted and then i want to take you guys to the back of the car Something that's notable on the 535 that you don't get on the other models, which is the 518, the 520, the 525, the 528. The exhaust system is in the center, but the 535 came with a double exhaust or a double tailpiece. This one uh, uh, has had an aftermarket exhaust fitted. Uh, we need to fight with Mo as to why he will allow a 535 to have a single tailpiece. Um, I will be doing the exhaust and you guessed it, Power Pipes is going to be doing my exhaust system. Um, super excited for that. Um, eventually, when we get there. Now, there's a few other things I look at. So, your rear spoiler is quite important. BMW at the time offered a few examples. This is the most common one on the 535. There is another one that is also very desirable but hard to get in today's time. So, I don't think I will be changing the spoiler. I actually forgot to show you guys something. If you peep through here, you'll see the car's got its original Pioneer old school speakers. Uh, it's also got an old school Pioneer radio, which is awesome. It's period correct. So, I might leave it, I might change it. Depends on what mood I'm in. But uh, yeah, that's all the small stuff that I look at. Another thing as well is the condition of the bumpers. Um, this badge is the one when you see it in your rear view mirror or back in the day when you see an e12 tailing you and it says 535 you move out of the way bra because you're about to get whooped um so look the car it is in good condition there is small stuff i'll need to change like i'm gonna be getting a new kidney grill it is available from bmw uh, I'm going to be changing the headlights. I've got a set of headlights. I've accumulated a lot of spares over the years for these cars because I've owned so many of them and I've always loved them. So I have started buying parts uh, uh, to do the restoration. I'm not sure when I'm going to get time to do the restoration, but the main thing is owning the car. Uh, I think that's the biggest hurdle. Um, and again, if you're buying a car, a car like this, a lot of them are in this condition. Um, it's got a very big history behind it. Uh, so much so that this car paved the way for the M5. So BMW at the time never had the M car. This was called the M535, but it was never considered an M car. And this paved the way for the M5. So it's got a lot of special history and it led to a lot of great things in BMW. I wanna show you guys the exciting part, which is the heart of the car. Okay, now this is what makes the car special, is the motor, the engine. 3.5 liters back in the day with the LSD Duff was something to be proud of. Um, I mentioned earlier that it is my favorite car to drive, and I mean this because I've experienced it, I've driven this, and it's given me a thrill. It's tail happy. And also it's got a reputation where all the tugs back in the day in order to get away from cops used to use these cars. This was the getaway car. Um, it, a lot of them also have been wrapped around trees because a 3.5 liter with the LSD Duff, if you don't know how to drive the car, you're gonna be in trouble. Similar to an IS, IS also has LSD Duff. So this particular car um, has had work done to it. I need to get it back to originality, so I need to source the original airbox, the original intake. Um, 
The airflow meter has been played around with and open. I need to try and source an original airflow meter because I don't think this airflow meter is in working condition purely because it's been open. So a lot of dust would have gone through which will affect the airflow meter. This guy is currently running management. I'm not a fan of management. But I want to get it back to stock and originality. And uh, what I like about it is that it still has its original stickers which I will be changing. Something that's very interesting is if you have a look at the screws here by the radiator and this is something that excites me. This radiator has never been removed, never been reconned. It's still got its original yellow torque settings from the factory. So when you when you when this car was assembled, in order for the quality check to be done, uh, a, to a screw had to be torqued to a certain specification, and the quality insurance inspector used to put the yellow mark on the screw or the nut or the bolt or the clamp just to certify that it has been torqued according to specifications. I'm very excited to build this car. I don't know when I'm going to build it and restore it, but again, like I mentioned earlier, I own it now. So hopefully in a few years or a year or two years, um, I, I'd, look, I'd look at restoring it. I do have a few other projects that I need to finish. And um, again, one of my favorite series, I love them. Um, I've owned a few and every time I sell, I regret and I always tell myself that I need to get another one. I need to get another one. And finally, I got one that I really like. A car that I will always remember is a car that I sold to a friend of mine uh, who doesn't want, who, who, who agreed to sell me back the car when he was ready to sell and I've been nagging him. It was my gold 528 with factory sunroof. That was my second favorite E12 that I've ever owned. I'm gonna pop up on the screen now some of the E12s I've owned and especially the 535. Comment and let me know which one was your favorite. Um, I personally, my one was the gold one with the stepped up TRX wheels and the factory sunroof. Factory sunroof on an E12 to get is very difficult. So if you have an E12 or a factory sunroof, you have gold boss. Um, I hope you guys found this video informative. I thought I'd, I'd break away a little bit from the E30s and give you guys a little bit of a variety and also share another series that I'm in love with, which is the E12. Um, Maybe you guys can comment and let me know how you feel about the E12, which is your favorite series. And also, do you have a memory attached to this 5 Series? I believe uh, most people do because this was the car back in the day to own. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning into our channel. Uh, I'm glad I'm able to share my passion and a bit of my knowledge. I say a bit of my knowledge because I don't know everything and we learn from each other. I can't tell you if this is my favorite car out of my collection. Number one would be Celeb, number two would be Skoko. This car sits high up there as being one of my favorite series in BMW. I am going to document the restoration process, uh, so I'm looking forward to that, guys. And I actually look forward to doing this episode because I love the series. I love a 5 Series. I have a lot of good memories with the 5 Series. And maybe you guys can comment with the memory that you link to with the 5 Series. Do you know someone that owns it? Did your dad or maybe your grandfather or your uncle own the 5 Series? It will be interesting to share your stories and where your love started off with the 5 Series. I also want to thank you guys as always for subscribing, for liking, for commenting and interacting with us. Uh, please remember, like I said, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and please get as many people to view. So when you are going to pay for your groceries, don't forget to tell the cashier to swipe. It's a check card and also that they need to subscribe to our channel. Because the more subscriptions we get, the more views we get, it's going to mean that we are able to push out more content for you guys. And remember, this channel is purely about you guys and for the love of cars. So from me, thank you so much for joining. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a lacquer evening, boss.